In this diagram, we have a beaker and this beaker is filled with water. This uh, red sphere is a small body which is dropped in the beaker. Now, mind you, this body is just dropped, it is not thrown inside of the beaker. So that means the body is dropped from the state of rest. What will happen to this body? Obviously, this body, since it is heavy, it will fall down, right? So why does this body fall down? Because it, it is acted upon by the force of gravity. And that is nothing but the weight of the body. So the weight of the body is acted from the center of gravity and that weight of the body is mg. So that is the first force that act on the body. There are other forces acting on the body. So first, the uh, number one, it is the weight of the body which is acting vertically downward. Okay. Now, what are the other forces acting on the body? The upward thrust capital T, which is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid, right? So whenever a body is immersed in a liquid, what will happen? There will be a thrust which is acting upward, okay, which pushes the body upward, right? That is the thrust, all right? And this upward thrust is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. Now, what will happen? If the initial level of the uh, of the water is let's say here, let's say when the body was not uh, immersed, was not inserted, was not um, uh, dipped inside of this liquid, the level of water was this much. Okay, let's say till here. Now what will happen? Since this body is dipped inside of the liquid, the level of water will rise. I think that is understood. Yes or no? So by how much the liquid has displaced? It has displaced by, by this amount. This part is the weight, is the displaced fluid. Okay, now the weight of this displaced fluid is equal to the upward thrust. And that is according to Archimedes' principle. So that is the, th the second force acting on the body. The third force acting on the body is the viscous drag which is acting opposite to the direction of motion. So as this body is falling downward, the viscous drag will be acting upward. Okay, and uh, what will happen here? Now listen carefully. So we have the three forces acting on the body. First of all, the weight mg, which is acting downward, the upward thrust, which is acting upward, and the viscous drag also is acting upward. So after some time, initially the body, initially when the body is dropped from rest, it will accelerate. Okay, it will accelerate. Why? Because the, ma the, the weight mg would be dominating all the other forces. After some time, after this body has gone some distance, the upward force, the total upward force will balance with the total downward force. All right, so no more force is acting on the body and if no force is acting on the body, then the body will start moving with constant velocity. Is this clear? So this is how the graph look like. From a stationary state, the velocity increases. It increases and then after some time, the velocity becomes constant. So this maximum constant velocity is denoted by Vt and is known as terminal velocity. Got it? So how do we define terminal velocity? It is the maximum constant velocity acquired by a body while falling freely in a viscous fluid. Okay? And terminal velocity has many uh, applications uh, in real life. Okay, we are going to discuss this uh, application one by one, but first of all, let us derive the expression of the terminal velocity. Let a body of mass m having, having density rho be falling freely in a viscous 
fluid of density sigma okay so rho is what is the density of the body and sigma here is the density of the fluid okay let r small r be the radius of the body so here we are considering the body to be spherical in shape but this is true for all types of shapes all right okay the different forces the different forces acting on the body are number one weight uh, mg acting vertically downward so that is w here is equal to mg okay or w is equal to instead of mass we know that uh, density is uh, mass by volume right density density of the body we denoted with rho and that is mass by volume of the body this is capital v mind you it is not small v all right so from here we have what from here we have uh, the mass to be density into volume okay so density into volume into g all right now volume since the body is a sphere what will be the volume of the body 4 by 3 pi r cube i think that is uh, well known right that is the volume of a sphere 4 by 3 pi r, r cube rho g so basically this is the weight the expression of the weight which is acting downward so that's the first force acting on the body number two the upward thrust the upward thrust capital t okay and this upward thrust what did we say we say that it is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid all right so we know that uh, i think i explained to you already this one that when the body is dipped inside of the fluid the level of the water will go up a little bit right so but how much the um, uh, how much I, I mean the the fluid will be displaced a little bit and that amount of displaced fluid its weight will be equal to the upward thrust got it and archimedes principle says that the weight of the displaced fluid is actually equal uh, sorry the the volume of the displaced fluid is actually equal to the volume of the body okay so weight of the displaced fluid here will be mass of displaced fluid let's call this uh, m dash into acceleration due to gravity g right and mass of displaced fluid we know that mass is a density into volume but then the density of the fluid is denoted by sigma right so this will be sigma volume of the displaced fluid let's con uh, let us call this v dash into g what is v dash here it is the volume of the displaced fluid m dash here is the mass of the displaced fluid got it so this will be sigma and v dash here according to archimedes principle he said something like this suppose i have a suppose you have a beaker okay you have a beaker like this okay initially the level of uh, liquid will be here let's say okay that much now when you put a body inside of this uh, liquid let's say this body all right so obviously the liquid level will go up yes or no it will, it will go up by that much let's say okay that much is the new level now so archimedes principle says that the volume of this displaced fluid this one the volume of this is equal to the volume of the body right this volume is v dash volume of the body is v 
So it means that V is equal to V dash. So instead of V dash here, we are going to write V G. Since V is V dash is equal to V, right? And what is V here? V here is nothing but the volume of the sphere, right? The volume of the body. And that again is 4 by 3 pi r cube. So we have 4 by 3 pi r cube sigma g. This is equation 2. So that's the second force. What is the third force? Number 3, the viscous drag uh, F okay and uh, viscous drag from Stokes law this is 6 pi eta R V this expression we already obtained before we're not going to derive equation 3 anymore got it now what happened when the body attained uh, attained uh, terminal velocity what did we say? That an equilibrium is attained. Yes or no? The total upward force balances with the total downward force. So you say uh, at, at terminal, at terminal velocity, at terminal velocity means this velocity now is equal to Vt. Equilibrium, no, don't say equilibrium, you just say the total upward force Total upward force um, force this will be equal to the total total I wrote total total downward force okay and what are those upward forces they are the the upward thrust T and uh, the viscous drag F, while the downward force is the weight W. Got it? So let me put F here. So this will be W minus T. Let us put the expressions of all these uh, three quantities. F is 6 pi eta RV, that is from equation 3. Weight from equation 1 is uh, 4 by 3 pi R cube rho g minus and uh, upward thrust is 4 by 3 pi r cube sigma g okay so i think we can take common some of the terms out here 4 by 3 pi r cube then you have uh, rho uh, minus sigma g something like this got it 6 pi eta r v now the velocity is vt Right, because it has attained the terminal velocity. So let me write here Vt. Understand? So we can uh, cancel out some of the terms. We can cancel this pi. Let me cancel with a different color. You can cancel this, uh, maybe blue. Yeah, cancel this pi. This pi and this pi will be canceled. 1r and 1 and 1r here will be canceled. So you get r square then uh, this uh, will go 3, this will go here, 2. Understand? So the value of Vt will be eta will go down here, right? So let me write it in the next page. So therefore, Vt will be what? Will be 2, um, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. 2 by 9 because this 3 will go down here it will multiply with this and another 3 you will get 9 so 2 by 9 and then in the denominator you will have uh, r square all right let me write that first 2 by 9 r square rho minus sigma g whole thing divided by eta Okay, so this is the expression for the terminal velocity. Got it? Let's call this sum equation 4. So some of the important points uh, out here. Uh, you see, if you look at this uh, expression 4, you will see that the terminal velocity, it depends on various uh, factors. It depends on the radius of the body. Radius is something to do with the size of the body. 
So it means, and, and how does it, it vary with the radius? It is directly proportional to the radius, yes or no? So it means that as the body is bigger, the terminal velocity also will be higher, right? It depends on the difference of the densities, okay? And also it depends on the coefficient of viscosity. So we're going to discuss these important points one by one. So the first one, uh, the terminal velocity is directly proportional to R square, right? It's directly proportional to R square. So the bigger the body, the bigger the body, the higher is the terminal velocity, right? So that's the first point. Second point is uh, Vt is inversely proportional to coefficient of viscosity. Now this sigma here, the coefficient of viscosity, it actually tells you about how thick or how how you know um, how slow. No, suppose if you if you compare water and and honey, then in that case. Which one will have a greater value of eta? Honey will have greater value of eta, is it not? I discussed with you already that uh, the greater the value of eta, the slower the, slower the uh, fluid will flow. In other words, the thicker will be the fluid. Understand here? So it means that if the fluid is thick, then the body will fall slowly because this is inversely proportional. I think that is logical, isn't it? Not? If you drop a marble in water, it will fall quite fast. But if you drop the same marble in a jar containing honey, then the marble will go, will go quite slowly. All right. Uh, so I will rewrite here. So we say um, the, the greater the greater the value the value of uh, eta for the li liquid or for the fluid we have been using the word fluid um, lower is the terminal velocity okay so that's the second point third point uh, it also depends on, okay, this one, rho minus sigma. If suppose uh, rho is uh, greater than sigma, Vt is positive and the body, the, I wrote the body, not body, we're not dealing with body out here. The body, the body falls. Okay, so if Vt is positive. Why? Because Vt is always directed downward. The body will fall. If, however, uh, if, however, uh, rho is uh, less than sigma, Vt is negative. The body rises. For example, what? For example, what? See here, rho here is the density of the body, right? This uh, sigma is the density of the fluid. For example, an air bubble in water. An air bubble in water always rises up, yes? And this body out here that we are talking about uh, does not necessarily mean a solid body or a metallic body. It can be any body. It can be an air bubble also. So in this case, since the density of the air bubble is lesser than the density, than the density of water, then rho minus sigma will be negative, so Vt will be negative. And if Vt is negative, the body rises. Example, air bubble in water. This is clear here. So if the question comes in the exam, why does uh, a marble fall uh, when um, immersed? Okay, when immersed in water, but air bubble rises. The reason is this. For the marble, density of the marble is greater than the density of water, so therefore terminal velocity is positive, the marble falls. Density of the air is less than the density of water, terminal velocity is negative, the 
air bubble rises. Is this clear? So this is all about uh, terminal velocity and I want you to read and listen to this uh, lecture nicely because it can be important from the exam point of view. Thank you.